Hi everyone. Um, my name is Boshan Dweni. I'm one of the co-chairs for the RHT and LMIC's chapter, and I'll be presenting um, today with Joshua Sorboyle. So we'll just get into it in terms of um, just a brief background. I mean, we're not going to go into too much detail. It's like preaching to the converted because okay. if you're here, you already know um, the importance of R for HTA actually does. Um, so we do know that the aims of um, our HTA is basically to, um, you know, have a discussion out there about the R packages that um, HTA analysts can actually use and um, how to use R in cost effectiveness analysis. And like we're here today, we've seen wonderful presentations on how other people are actually using are out there and we're discussing how maybe other people can adapt or um, see how they can use it and, and so forth. So why was it important um, to, to perhaps have the RA, RHTA and MIC's chapter? Well, first of all, before we go into that, it's basically to talk about um, the fact that the LMIC's chapter is to showcase the strength of R um, because, uh, you know, there, there has been a need for um, HT analysts to actually use our programming language um, to make things better in the way that they model or, or do data analysis. Um, so I'll just go forward. So going back, this is something that we see also um, when, when I was you know, doing my master's in Sheffield, um, at some point, even though I was learning how to use um, softwares like, like R pro uh, programming, um, some models were still built in Microsoft Excel. And in some instances in LMIC still, we still see that happening um, in triage. Um, some people still um, use triage, some people use data. So the nice thing about using R is that it is free, it is open source, um, and that would be really beneficial for places like LMICs where they're always looking for um, something that is more affordable and, and that they can perhaps use to reproduce um, the same kind of results in a, in a, in a cost-effective way. Um, so in South Africa, for, for instance, I'll talk about how we are introducing um, you know, the universal health coverage. And in order to put together such um, models, it will be complicated. Um, so having software um, language programming like um, R actually helps in that you can actually build those complicated models and be able to, to like um, adapt them and so forth without having to you know, build an Excel model and, and try and redo this again. But we've also seen um, how important it is to actually use um, our programming in complicated other models like in oncology or in rare disease modeling where there are so many health states um, in which you, know, you can um, just plug in the numbers, you've built the model in R and then you can just plug in the numbers and then in a, in a fast um, amount of time or quick, um, you can actually get those results, right? Um, so what we're planning to do as a chapter, um, beginning of this year in February, we, we actually had our inaugural um, presentation, which is almost in a similar format to this one that we're having today. And it was amazing to have um, the, the main our HTA consortium team support us and, and really showcase what can be done with our programming. Um, so what we've done now is that going forward, we're gonna be having um, tutorials because some people I've heard someone in the initial presentation saying, how do you learn um, how to use R for HTA? So this is something that we are planning to actually um, assist people that attend our tutorial to say, come on, you can learn as part of a group, we can do this together. And so every quarter, um, Josh will expand this in more detail, we'll be focusing on that because that will actually help people to see how they can individually um, start working on either adapting models and actually um, you know, use, use that with people and then ex expand it within their organizations as well. Okay, so in order to find out whether people really do have an interest in, in, in what we're doing, um, we did a quick um, social media poll um, on Twitter, LinkedIn, and, you know, other institution, in institutions. And what we found out is, is that people heard about us from mostly um, LinkedIn and a great number of people from our Twitter um, our Twitter pages. So we then went to ask people there, um, 
you know, what kind of software are you currently using um, to do your health economic evaluation? And almost 45% said they were using Excel or Excel VBA, um, followed that by some people that said they were actually using R. Um, and then we have a good number of people that were using triage or Stata. Um, and some of them obviously said none. Probably that's people that are maybe um, not even in the industry as yet. Um, and then in terms of their experience using R, we found that 45% had little experience. Um, and while 34% um, were intermediary users, while um, some of them said, well, 18% said we, we don't have experience, but we would like to learn. Um, so fine, we now found out that people understood, you know, some people would be able to use R, but when it came specifically to R for HTA, a whooping 69% right um said they don't know how to use r for hta so for for us that sample size showed that there is a, a market or a gap in the market where we can actually come in to assist people um to learn a bit more about how to actually use r for hta um yeah so i'll then leave it to josh to go on um, presenting the rest uh, hi everyone thanks b um for the introduction um so yeah i guess the the question that always comes up is why should we use r um i think the obvious first point is that it scales far more efficiently than for example uh, excel and other software um you know if you try to do a very complex model in excel it very quickly becomes quite um quite a uh, uh, unworldly and hard to use um but uh the next thing the very important thing is that R compared to a lot of other software has a as a really established user base um and has several packages specifically for hta health economic uh, health economic modeling um and on top of that it actually really helps with the community in terms of the community support, uh, you know, like typical stack overflow po uh, posts, etc. Um, and I think a really great point, lastly, is that it ensures reproducibility. Um, and um, so on top of that, models can easily and safely be hosted um, and shared via services like GitHub. Um, and it also enables for version control. Uh, so basically your models don't break. Um, and you can also create a markdown, which, you know, you can easily have reproducible PDFs and then also interactive dashboards through Shiny. Um, I think also through that, it's also about collaboration. So, you know, kind of like uh, Word, you know, Microsoft Word's uh, editing tool where you can follow where people have made changes. Um, using GitHub Git, you can actually see where your collaborators have made changes. And that really helps when, when a whole team is building a model. Um, so following on from that, the, the whole aim of the LMIC chapter um, is to bridge the gap and try to upskill people in low and middle income country contexts. Um, and the way we are looking to do this is basically by hosting a single workshop every year and then every subsequent quarter we hold tutorial focused workshops so in february we had a really great successful workshop um, and we had a really great response from the community um, where people presented their r related hta work that was specific to lmic's um, in terms of, you know, the more general coding stuff, so survival modeling, shiny apps, etc. And then down to the more specific, which actually kind of showed off work done in LMICs and which was very applicable to those contexts. Um, in the long term, we also hope, well, we are planning um, uh, to host intermediate, well, introductory, intermediate, and advanced workshops. Our first one's actually coming up in June, which you'll see in the next slide. Um, but yeah, so we actually have topics from, uh, for example, in February, we had our presentation workshop, then in June, we're having our introductory basic uh, RHTA tutorial, where base, uh, you'll be introduced to very basic R syntax, trying to understand what R actually does under the hood. Um, and then from there, you'll be basically be taught how to code a very simple uh, six-second model, um, where we are also planning to have basically 
uh, um, uh, breakout rooms so people can benefit from discussion and interactions and you know clarify any uncertainties. Um, and then also intermediate and advanced workshops. We will probably delve into topics. Uh, we will delve into topics like sensitivity analysis, um, and then also more advanced things like creating a shiny dashboard or um, uh, other stuff like meta analysis, etc. Using R specifically. So our target mar market. Um, we are trying to the whole our one of our core core aims, I guess, is that we want to aim to be a more of a grassroots movement. Um, and we are not going to try attempt to change big uh, established institutions. Uh, we really want to get individuals excited about R and R for HTA specifically, um, in the hope that you know in five, 10, 20 years, these people are going to be uh, the people in power making decisions and kind of um, you know running our institutions. So with that said, we're targeting generally just LMIC analysts um, who are who are interested in learning R, upskilling themselves, etc. Um, we also are trying to establish, you know, greater with greater connections with established HTA bodies um, and other national health insurance, for example, like here in South Africa, um, uh, getting into contact with people with the Department of Health who are in the process of establishing our national health insurance uh, body. Um, and uh, we've also kind of contemplated, still in the process of whether we're going to do it or not, to contact actual local health insurance agencies, etc., um, and to see if they're interested in, in, you know, getting their analysts to learn R. Um, and then we've also recently established a great uh, relationship with ISPO, specifically the South African chapter and some other LMIC chapters, and also IECS in, uh, in Argentina through one of our people on our scientific committee. Next slide. Yeah, this is just a brief overview of our team. So including coaches, uh, Buchle and I, we have Karina, Federico and Yanga, who all help us out in their spare time. And then of course, we also have great things to our, great thanks to our uh, advisory panel, uh, Gianluca and Howard, and then also Fernando, um, who've given us great guidance and support, as B said earlier. Um, so from here, I think as Butler is the boss of the social media boss, I'm going to allow her to take over. Thank you. Um, thanks, Josh. So for, for us, I think it's it's quite important that we um, start building it. In LMIC community. Um, it's, it's great to have an international community, but also to be specific to LMICs as well, because we find that a lot of people work in silos. So if we can connect and um, perhaps for, uh, form partnerships, like Josh said, we've, we have a partnership with ISPO, we have a partnership with the Institute of Clinical Effect Effectiveness and Health Policy in Argentina. We're always looking for partnerships because that's how we actually can spread the word because they actually have followings. Um, so we do have social media pages if you're not following us already. Um, we have a Twitter handle that's there and our LinkedIn page um, that's also there as well. So if you know of colleagues that are interested in learning a bit more about um, R for HTA and LMICs, um, please just let them know. Um, we're always spreading the word on our social media pages. Okay, so just I'm going to punt a little bit about the upcoming workshop Josh has said about, um, has mentioned about it. So on the 21st of June, um, that's where you can actually learn a bit more um, on, on um you know, how to actually start adapting the six sector model and so forth. But for more details, you can go on our Eventbrite um, page and just log in and see. And we also have scholarships that are available for um, HTA analysts, analysts in, HTA in, in LMICs that are actually deserving and cannot afford. So we still have them available if you know of anybody that would be keen to attend the introductory workshop. Please just get in touch with myself or Josh. Our email addresses are there as well. Okay. And we would like to say thank you um, to our partners, as um, you can see there, um, because they really have uh, been, you know, a real, a real like a lot of help for us um, out there. We wouldn't have done it without them um, in terms of spreading the word, in terms of getting guidance and so forth. So we really do um, appreciate it. Um, and, and that's the end of our workshop. I mean, presentation, I mean. Lovely. Thanks very much, guys. Um, I know you're preaching to the converted, but I think 
it's people will still really appreciate the effort that you're putting in here um i mean the, the story of actually you know why r is so much more accessible uh, and it's suitable I, I think that resonates with everybody you know not not just in the in a learning middle-income country context you know just that accessibility of some of this very expensive specialized software is an experience that i think a lot of us will have had at, uh, at some point um there are there are questions and, and comments coming into the chat um i'm i just want to maybe ask one or two of my, my own before maybe we go to to those i just wanted to ask a little bit about um your thoughts on graduate students who, who maybe are mobile internationally in terms of they might do some of your graduate training uh, abroad in high income country context and you go and then maybe people go home or even if they don't go home they still maintain an awful lot of research links with maybe where they did their their early degrees and so on is, is that something that you're consciously thinking about it in in the group about uh how you can support that within the chapter yeah i think i'm, I'm one of those um <laughs> so um you you get back home and and the problem is that with lmic's unlike um a country like uh you know you know england or or unlike being in the uk there's a there's a database where you can actually um go out there and, and you know be able to build models in lmic's that is a bit of a problem you know so um we are targeting those kind of people and trying to see how perhaps you know we can build partnerships and try start starting to build of those databases um, and being able to maybe build models and and see how we can borrow you know uh, for lack of a better word um from one another and and you know help our, our healthcare systems um be better at decision uh making yeah josh do you have an answer to that uh yeah i mean i think that that's also like one of our primary motivations is to kind of establish that community and i mean i know from from i mean i was taught in in south africa so i'm i i I know Bushley probably has better experience than me going from a very HTA focused country to somewhere where you know it's almost non-existent. Um, so, but I think one of the main problems in NMICs is actually kind of that repeated exposure to these techniques. And um, I think, yeah, let's hope hopefully what we want to do is kind of enable people by giving them things to do, practice, code to copy and in general have better R skills so that they can apply it in, in many ways. I mean, I think one of one of my talking points often when people ask me about R is that uh, I kind of did the opposite route where I skipped Excel and went straight to R um, in terms of learning it in depth um, and learning R actually in the end made me a better, better Excel or VBA coder, I should say. So yeah, um, that's definitely on our minds. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Rita, do you want to go ahead? I'm sorry, James. I see those questions in the chat, and I'm aware of the time. Yeah, yeah. I, was, <laughs> so I don't do know if you want to take a few of them. I know we're at time, but there's there's a few practical questions. Do you want to address? Yeah. Them? Okay. Cool. Um, Angela. So, if you would like to partner with us, let us know. We're always willing to offer, um, you know, um, workshops or events wherever it's, it's possible. Like um, I think Josh mentioned on Logic Friday, we had one with one of the, the universities in South Africa and you know they're going to be sending their students to attend our, our workshop so um reach out to us at, at any time we'll put our emails in the in the chats below okay um what help would you appreciate most from from um from the general our HTA community um Josh just share, sharing our social links sharing our events um um making people aware I think because I think I mean even in the last last year's uh main consortiums are HTA uh, workshop this this workshop last year you, we we were spurred by the fact that there were so many LMIC people attending these events and there's a clear need so I mean just I think making us making us you know sharing our stuff talking to colleagues about us yeah and, and coming to our events I mean that would be great yeah Super. um sorry sorry one last one sorry James um there's one from Pamela that's asking if we can offer um the workshops in in different languages um Pamela we're already doing that for the Latin America community um so there will be breakout sessions in Spanish so at least that will foster a way in which they can actually interact but we're always if if you have a different language that perhaps besides Latin um Spanish uh we're more than happy to um think about it provided with good tutors that can actually assist yeah. with that and we also, okay. we're also translating our resources into different languages. Yeah. So that's another. 
Okay. Super. Well, thank Great. You. Thanks very much for addressing those questions. That's really brilliant. If there's anything that's been left out, I think we can we can do it in the chat. But that was I'm really grateful, guys, for that. I know you're kind of pushing at an open door, but I think the effort still is is very very uh, important. Okay. So 